Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Elizabeth Metzkin. She's joining us here as a board-certified and fellowship-trained orthopedic surgeon specializing in sports medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital. She's going to talk about her recent research, ACL Graft Choice for the Elite Female Athlete Minimize Morbidity. Stay with the hamstring graft. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Matskin. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. What got you into sports medicine? Yeah, so uh, after I finished my orthopedic residency training, I did a fellowship in sports medicine, uh, always being interested in trying to keep our athletes out on the playing field, mm-hmm. always interested in the type of injuries that they sustained and figuring out how I can uh, treat it and make it better for them to get back out there. We all, you know, if we're sports fans, we hear about the infamous ACL. What is the ACL and what types of injuries can be sustained? Yeah, so the ACL is probably one of the four major ligaments in our knee. We have two on the outsides, our MCL, medial collateral ligament, and uh, our lateral collateral ligament. And there's two ligaments that sit in the center of the knee, our ACL, which stands for our anterior cruciate ligament, and our PCL, which which sits behind the ACL as, as our posterior cruciate ligament. And your ACL is really important for providing stability to your knee when you're participating in any type of cutting or pivoting sports which is why we see a lot of ACL injuries in our athletes that participate in these type of sports, such as football, basketball, soccer. Once an athlete experiences an ACL injury, is this something that is probably going to plague them forever? Are they relatively simple injuries to repair? So the majority of ACL injuries are an ACL tear and Majority of them aren't reparable. Some ACL injuries can be repaired, but most of the time we're talking about an ACL reconstruction. Mm. So where we're making them a new ACL ligament with tissue from somewhere else. And, you know, we're quite good at doing these surgeries to get our athletes back out on the playing field. What we're not really good at is potentially preventing some of the post-traumatic degenerative change they may experience Mm. 20 25 years after their initial ACL injury. Mm -hmm. Taking tissue from another part of the body and and doing this, uh, rebuilding this ACL, it must be pretty invasive. Is that correct or am I wrong in that assumption? So, you know, some, there there are multiple options we have Mm -hmm. to make patients with ACL with the most common ones being either using some of our patellar tendons, some of our quad tendons, or hamstring tendon. The last choice would be to use an allograft or a cadaver tendon, which we usually don't use in our younger athletes because our studies have demonstrated that they don't do quite as well. There is some morbidity involved in taking these grafts out, but not enough that they're limited by it in the long term. Now, your recent research, ACL graft choice for the elite female athlete, uh, minimize morbidity. What are some of the other factors that someone needs to know about if they have to undergo one of these reconstructions? Well, I think it's really important that, you know, we first know that, you know, females have a higher risk of ACL tear. Mm. uh, And once they have an ACL reconstruction, their outcomes aren't quite as good as our male athletes. So they have a higher risk of re-injury and they have a lower rate of return to sport at the same level. So, My interest in the female athlete stems from trying to figure out what can we do to try and make this a more level playing field for our female athletes. How can we make ACL reconstruction better for our female athletes? When you look at the literature, Mm -hmm. a lot of the literature demonstrates that if we put a smaller graft or a smaller ACL in our patients, there's a higher risk of failure. And I think historically, our female athletes have received smaller grafts and therefore have had a higher risk of failure. Because I think that historically, they've been, when they've had surgery, the ACL graft that we've put in hasn't been quite as robust as the ones in our male athletes. And so those have a higher risk of re-injury and failure. And so as we've progressed, and gotten better at our ACL reconstructions and our fixation techniques have changed, we can now make a much more robust graft uh, to provide these athletes with a larger graft diameter and hopefully 
you know, with time, follow them and demonstrate that their return to sport rate and their risk of re-injury after ACL reconstruction is more equal to the male athletes. Now, ACL graft choice for the elite female athlete morbidity stay with the hamstring graft. It was recently presented at the uh, 2022 American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons annual meeting. Is it the, the strength and size of the hamstring graft? What exactly is the hamstring graft? Yeah, so the hamstring graft is, you know, we've, you know, been taking hamstring grafts for ACL reconstruction for a very long time. But Traditionally, they've been doubled over, and we now have techniques where we can now quadruple the hamstring. And you can imagine if you just took a rope and doubled it over, you'll have a certain diameter. But if you quadruple it, your diameter is much bigger, and a thicker rope is certainly going to be harder to break or snap than a thinner rope. And that's very much like when we use these quadrupled hamstring grafts. We can provide these patients with a thicker, more robust graft to hopefully give them a better chance to get back out on the playing field with a lower chance of re-injury. Let's say an athlete has this reconstruction and they don't necessarily go back to playing at all. Will they, we talked earlier about, you know, 20 years down the road, uh, will they still have some type of problem or is it designed specifically to get them back in? And if they don't, then they're, they're going to have problems. Yeah. So, I mean, I think uh, there's two parts to that question. I think one, not all patients that tear their ACL have to have surgery to reconstruct it. So if someone really doesn't participate in cutting, pivoting sports, uh, maybe they're a runner, maybe they're a little bit older, then, you know, sometimes we can just do rehabilitation, physical therapy, and they're going to get back to life and they can still lead a very active lifestyle. But for most of our younger patients that are going to continue to play competitive sports in high school or college, most of them all will end up with an ACL reconstruction. Now, there have been some studies that have demonstrated an increased risk of osteoarthritis down the road with certain grafts, such as using a bone patellar tendon bone graft, uh, and a little bit less risk when using a hamstring graft. But that being said, as I mentioned earlier, we still can't prevent some of the post-traumatic changes mm -hmm. that can occur you know, 20 plus years after an ACL injury. And those changes are most likely because of the initial injury itself. Are there any other injuries other than uh, ACL that use the same type of techniques for reconstruction or repair? Uh, well, similar techniques if, you know, other ligaments are injured. So, you know, in a somewhat similar way, we can reconstruct a PCL uh, ligament if it's torn and, and requires surgery. Well, is there anything that you'd like to add uh, before we get a website where our listeners can learn more? Yeah, I would, um, you know, just say that, you know, ultimately our goal is to uh, make sure that all of our athletes are receiving an adequate graft and it's placed technically well so that we can give them the best chance in the future. And, you know, I would love to remind everyone who's doing ACL reconstructions that graft size matters and let's try and rewrite our female athletes' comeback stories. Give us a website where we can learn more. So you can learn more at mgbsports.com and you can search for our Women's Sports Medicine website as well. And I do believe another uh, web source would be massgeneralbrigham.org. Is that correct? Yes. Well, Dr. Matskin, I appreciate you lending us some of your time this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.